way I best fit the immunotherapy into my lifestyle was just making sure that I took three days after the infusion to myself. I knew with my own experiences that I experienced I had quite bad headaches afterwards. I was very tired. So I did not want to put more on my plate than necessary. I used to not allow my, so like I didn't have any socially uh, social events booked in. I didn't allow my friends to come over. And I really sort of just put that time aside to relax and recuperate. I love doing woodwork and I love going for walks and I love... Um, I love I love going for swims and I love and I love doing the things I normally do. Um, the treatments haven't stopped me from doing the things I love doing. Slowed me down a bit at times, but hasn't stopped me. How's it affected our lifestyle? <laughs> <laughs> totally turns it upside down. Um, throws you right out of whack. Um, and then when you, you just have to take some deep breaths, remember to breathe, <laughs> and then think about what you can do to incorporate it in your life and do everything you can to help the person who is suffering, um, make their life as easy as it can be so they can concentrate on what they need to do, which is getting their health back and surviving it. You do get down a bit. Sometimes you get down and when the, when the drugs are affecting you more you think, oh God, I'm not getting any better. Nothing's, you know, and that's only, it's just a period. And then a couple of days later you think, oh God, I feel really good. So yeah, look for those really good days. You do come down again with the drug, you do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Um, but then you come up again and then you're good again. So and it's getting better all the time, each, each time. The first six months were probably the harder, hardest. But now I do feel I'm coping with the drug a lot better. We kept up a lot of humour, didn't we? we? We weren't down about anything. We were very encouraged about the availability of the immunotherapy. That was amazing. So we were on some sort of track to, um, you know, have Kevin continue, even, you know, with a long time to come. And that's all hope. Um, and, and it's a good feeling, you know, and you get that from, from the staff at the hospital and um, the immunotherapy department were amazing. Um, so we actually had some good times in there. Um, it, it was a, a great experience as well as the, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just, um, seriousness of what he was facing, um, for want of a better word. Yeah, time away is, is very important to keep replenishing your energy because it's hard work being a carer. My husband was a, a tower of strength, so he was the, the debrief person and the uh, do the housework and the cooking person and all of those things. So, yeah, it helps. And I've always believed in control the controllables. So there's things you can control, there's things you can influence, and there's things that are out of your control. So, But it has brought it more so to the fore. I practised a lot of mindfulness. I went down to the beach a lot. My absolute favourite place to go is just get down to the beach, go for a walk. I had just had brain surgery prior to going on to treatment, so it was also quite important for me to get moving again. Um, but yeah, that sort of thing. I was doing the even the adult colouring books. They were quite fun. Yes. <laughs> so it was just about slowing down and making sure that I was focused on my health and being there and being present to my time and being really focused on myself rather than focusing on everything else in life. So many of our patients continue to work while they're receiving the immunotherapy treatment. Uh, I guess they just need to take in consideration the time off work they may need to attend appointments, you know, for their, their treatments and scans and, and, and blood tests. Um, so really it's a conversation between your workplace and your specialist about, um, you know, what uh, capacity that you're um, able to, to work in and you may um, need to um, change your uh, work commitments. Uh, but certainly many patients do continue to work 
while they're receiving their treatment. Uh, if you're not able to work uh, while you're uh, receiving your immunotherapy treatment or due to the, to the nature of your, your cancer, um, there's certainly support available from social workers um, in terms of um, the um, financial or supportive care needs patients might need. I just went on a holiday not long ago because I was healthy enough to go on a holiday overseas with a friend. It was just the best time because finally I'm at a point where I can go overseas independently. Uh, it was just the best thing. So, And immunotherapy allowed me to do that. The regularity of having something every fortnight and being able to accommodate that means that you know, our normal things of going away for three or four weeks, you can't do, you know, taking a decent holiday every year. And scheduling around that has been not really a restriction, but it just builds into your planning. Work for me has been good. I've been able to take leave whenever I need to be there with Peter, but there haven't been many options. But yeah, work's been really good. So it hasn't had a huge impact in those ways. I felt very normal. Um, I've Back then I was working. I would be working eight hours. I'd be lifting, pushing, pulling. As a st I, I used to work as a storeman. Uh, so I, for me, for me to do eight hours is would be absolutely nothing. I'm most amazed how I can still keep working. I'm here coming from the perspective of a carer. My dad uh, is a patient. Uh, with cancer, lung cancer, and through that journey I was part of the team looking after him, um, supporting my mum and the rest of my family and sort of being often uh, the intermediary with the clinical team and, and my dad. I work full time so it was really important that my employer knew about my dad being sick and fortunately they're fanta they were fantastic and gave me a lot of freedom. So it meant that I could be there at clinic visits and, and just to be around from time to time to help my mum and uh, support dad at various uh, appointments. I think the role of a carer, you often forget about yourself and uh, the things that you need to do. Uh, so I found that being really uh, open with my colleagues was, was really important and then once they understood they could support me. I think planning is really important. Um, the thing that I didn't think about with a cancer diagnosis and choosing immunotherapy was how time-consuming this is. So there's regular immunotherapy but then there's of course scans and, and uh, blood tests and regular appointments with uh, uh, my oncologist, my surgeon, the physiotherapy, etc. So this is quite time consuming. So in terms of maintaining lifestyle, balance, work, family, friends, you do need to plan. On the other hand, you need to also be really flexible because just when you think everything is planned, something happens and that routine can be, can be disrupted. Uh, so planning is important, but a need to be um, flexible is also just as important. Exercise is great for your mind as well as your fitness and just it keeps your body moving it keeps you distracted and it also you know you feel fantastic afterwards so if you can continue to do at least some level I think it's an incredible way to distract yourself through such a difficult time. So people who have lived their life and not done a lot of exercise, um, starting their immunotherapy for their cancer can uh, often be that gives them the green light to get up and start to do some exercise very gently. Um, but they should do it under the um, guidance of uh, a physiotherapist or an exercise physiologist. And it can be something very, very simple. It's never too late to start. Sometimes it's been a bit of a struggle because uh, fatigue is not a an uncommon side effects and I've certainly had um, aches and pains sometimes quite severe so sometimes it's been a bit of a struggle to maintain that 
exercise regime, but I've just modified it. I've, if, if I haven't felt up to it, then I've, I've kept the, my walk shorter. Um, but when I've felt, felt good, I, I've really appreciated the, the benefits of, of that exercise um, that it's offered offered me physically, but I think it also has a, a social, um, emotional um, impact as well. It's sort of um, given me space, um, fresh air, time to reflect. In terms of normality, I like to exercise. So when I'm feeling well enough, I get back to the gym and Pilates and a bit of yoga. So that's definitely something that I do and I'm feeling, that's when I know I'm feeling good. Even walks is always good. Um, and I sometimes tend to overdo that. So I have a bit of a go fast mode. So I have to be very wary of the fact to pull myself back because one of the side effects can be fatigue. So that's where I have to pull myself back a bit. I think because of his um, enjoyment of life and activities and he loves walking and he was doing anything up to, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten kilo, kilo, ten kilometres a day with the dog. He, he loves his walking, loves his fishing. Um, and to see that sort of stop for, all, you know, like ten to twelve months, I wondered, is, is it going to come back? But with his determination and that we were really fortunate and the physio um, to get him back into some shape slowly, but so much better now and such a good outlook. It's very important to keep um, healthy and active and continue uh, um, exercising while you're receiving your immunotherapy treatment. Certainly uh, some patients do like to take uh, complementary or alternative um, medications um, and this can be something that they'll uh, seek on their own or often um, you know, family or friends will recommend them. Uh, the main thing that we advise patients um, is to let us know what they're taking. Uh, there are some alternative uh, medications that can interact with the way immunotherapy works um, or potentially worsen some of the side effects um, experience. So we just always prefer to know uh, what patients are um, are taking and then we can check if there would be any uh, potential um, interactions. I asked my medical oncologist right at the very start about um, some of the, she said well if you if you give me the names of them I can check with the pharmacy whether they're suitable. Talk to your treating team about it, do not go to Dr Google, <laughs> Dr Google will be wrong possibly. Uh, so yes, get get to uh, speak to your treating team so that way the recommendation can be based exactly on what you're having. They know exactly the treatment that you're having. Uh, there's no specific dietary guidelines for patients while they're receiving immunotherapy. Uh, we always advocate that patients have um, a healthy, uh, nutritious uh, diet, uh, limit their intake of um, you know processed foods. Uh, some patients certainly have a decreased appetite and don't feel like um, eating as much while they're receiving treatment. Uh, and that certainly can be distressing um, for uh, family members, um, but often less distressing uh, for the patient. Um, so yeah, we always just recommend a balanced, um, healthy diet. Um, and you can talk to your team about a referral to um, a dietitian um, or nutrition assistant um, if you're concerned about your diet. We certainly just recommend everything um, in moderation and don't recommend any sort of radical, um, you know, diets or treatments while they're receiving their immunotherapy. Therapy.